call uh, Dr. Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, budgets are a numerical expression of a vision statement of a government. And what we have here in front of us in the Appropriations 27-2018 Estimates Bill and Budget 2017 exposes a visionless government that is out of ideas and stuck in the past. This is not a government that's brimming with ideas to take us to an exciting and optimistic future, to take us into the 21st century. Instead, what we have is a budget that expresses, um, simultaneously it manages to express um, visionless um, cruelty and bland managerialism rather than leadership. And that is what this government is delivering to the people of New Zealand, Mr Speaker. Because what this budget delivers is $400 million in tax cuts to the top 10% of earners. Now, we heard at the time of the, um, the tabling of the budget and the debates that came under after that, and the weeks that have ensued, the, the rapid spinning on the head of a pin to, of, of National Party members, and we've heard it here today in this debate, Mr Speaker, that this is New Zealanders' share in the dividends of growth. Well, Mr Speaker, this is a government that has exposed itself for wanting to give a disproportionate share of that dividend to the highest income earners. And this is not a vision for New Zealand that Labor can get behind, Mr Speaker. We want to see our fam families flourishing. That's why we put together an alternative families package that sees 70 per cent of our families better off. We want to see our health and our education systems funded so they can take us into the 21st century. We want to see that New Zealanders can get into housing and have affordable housing. These are things that we want to see, Mr Speaker. We also want to see a government that is making protecting our environment a priority. And this is not a government that is either doing enough to protect our environment or doing enough to combat climate change. Because, Mr Speaker, Budget 2017-2018 delivered $4 million in the fight against the, the, world, the globe's most pressing issue. This is the $4 million additional funding in, to address climate change. This is what this government is delivering to New Zealand. What it is not delivering is the additional funding that is required to meet the unmet need in the health sector, and particularly in the mental health sector. And it, it will say that it's never spent more on health than it, it has in this budget. That is correct, Mr Speaker, but there have never been more people. And until this government starts having an honest conversation about per capita growth in our economy and per capita spending, then we are not having the conversation that is required in this country. And it is why there are thousands of New Zealanders that are not getting the health care they require. It is why thousands of um, families are having to reach very deeply into their own hip pockets for those stationary bills that the schools sent home. The, up to $200, some of the stationary bills that parents in the Wigram electorate showed me that they were being asked for at the beginning of this year. Because parents were being to, uh, asked to fund some of the things that any of us would reasonably expect that a school could fund out of its operations budget. But, Mr Speaker, the freeze on operations fundings to our schools has meant that they simply cannot pay for the things that are required. <coughs> and I'm not talking about fancy extras here either, Mr Speaker. I'm talking about parents being asked to pay for the photocopy paper for the classroom, to pay for the whiteboard markers, to pay for the tissues that children require in the classroom. This is not stuff. I never recall my parents being sent a chalk bill when I was at school. And I'm frankly perplexed why it is that parents are being asked to fund this kind of thing now. <coughs> so, Mr Speaker, if I can uh, um, get over this coughing, one of the things that we simply have to do is that we have to have <coughs> an alternative vision. And that is exactly what Labor's fiscal plan has delivered. 
For the sixth Labour government is, about, is going to be about putting people first and restoring fairness. And this simply has to be what we see as a priority. And Mr Speaker, we have come up with a detailed plan that shows how we can do that. And we've come up with a detailed plan that shows how more of our families can be better off, how more of our families will have additional money in their pockets, how more of our families um, won't be having to go without to fund tax cuts for the top 10 per cent of workers. And Mr Speaker, we've also come up with a plan that can address those deficits that I've identified in health, in education, in housing. And what's more, Mr Speaker, we can do it while still paying down debt. And this is a fully costed um, plan that we've come up with, Mr Speaker, that shows that we'll do it. We've also said that we will stand up for New Zealanders that we will be there and we will be a government that backs our people. Yes, we will crack down on speculators by banning overseas speculators from buy and buying um, existing houses, and we will tighten the tax rules around that. And what will we do with that additional income from that additional tax revenue, Mr Speaker? We will use that money to make more of our homes warmer, healthier and drier. We aren't content to leave hundreds of thousands of homes uninsulated like this government is when it winds up its insulation package in the not very distant future at all. That we will keep investing in insulating our homes because the job is not done. But Mr Speaker, it doesn't matter how much insulation a home has unless there's an efficient and affordable and sustainable way to heat that house, it's not going to be warm. So we've said we will make that funding available for those homes as well. And Mr Speaker, we realise that even with a good insulation and efficient and affordable forms of heating in a home, for someone on the pension or someone on the main benefit, winter power bills can still be a struggle. So Mr Speaker, we're going to help people with their winter power bills because we know we are a richer country when we're not having to pick up the health tab for people that cannot afford to heat their homes adequately. And Mr Speaker, when I look around, when I meet with people in my electorate, I know what a difference that $700 or $450 a year is going to make to people. And Mr Speaker, it's not just the small things that we've observed that we know are going to make life better. We're going to be a government that actually has a 21st century plan for infrastructure. We saw Jacinda announce um, a, rail plan, a light rail plan for Auckland on Sunday. Well, Mr Speaker, we have a vision that sees commuter rail in Christchurch also. That we have a city that has grown and is reshaped in all different directions as we've recovered from our earthquake. And we are not content, as this government has, to fund simply building back the 20th century. We want to look ahead and see what we require for the future. And commuter rail has to be part of that picture for, for us, Mr Speaker, and we are absolutely committed to that. We will back our young people. We're not going to call them pretty damn hopeless and consign them to a scrap heap. We will really back our young people by reducing New Zealand's unemployment, getting apprenticeships up and running, and working with young people to make sure they are ready for the workforce and to be part of an exciting future that should be there for all New Zealanders and not, and not um, cast to the side. So, Mr Speaker, there is a real choice for people with this election. Unlike national cynical tax bribe of $400 million to the top 10 per cent of earners, Labor is sketching out a plan for a future. It's full of ideas. It's full of doing things differently. It's not just about the bland managerialism we are seeing from the government at the end of three terms. This is a government that doesn't have ideas, certainly isn't thinking about the future. It's not a government that is addressing the most pressing issues of our time. It is a government that's not even willing to think 
um, about what we have to do to address climate change in any meaningful way. It's not a government thinking about what the health century for the 21st century looks like. It's not a government that is producing the kind of exciting education policy that my colleague Chris Hipkins is. It is not a government that is looking out for its people, and that is what the sixth Labor government will do. Mr. Speaker. I call Melissa Lee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh,